Thank you, Mr. Zion, and thank you, Robert, for this presentation. I mean, thank we uh, often um, find that parks are an integral part of a community and a neighborhood, and particularly for those kids who have no other option um, in which to play. And, and many of us actually select, I know I did, um, when we purchased a home, uh, was near a park because I had a child and the ability. Some people, unfortunately, in our city think a park brings problems. I think a park brings opportunities for us. And to, to look at those graphs, which are, you know, there's nothing like a, a graph and statistics mm -hmm. that point out where some, some big challenges are. Um, and we know in, in finding, we had a presentation last night, Mr. Wiesar <clears throat> was there as well on our budget committee about Prop K funding and looking at um, the limited amount of money we had, how we prioritize that, and how we look at properties and land that is within uh, some of those areas that are neglected um, to be able to find the money to, to do that. Uh, because as you see, it's sometimes easier to buy some of the land. It's, it's, it's cheaper in some of those other areas uh, where it's already existing green space necessarily. And, uh, but I think this helps us refocus where we need to be and where we need to, uh, I think, uh, have. Um, it's, it's about prevention. It's about our uh, healthy environment. It's about creating better neighborhoods and quality of life. And this report and what you're doing um, really helps us in that way. And hopefully we can take that information, which I think Mr. LeBond just expressed as chair of that committee, take that information and use it for a, a purpose in, in which we can develop priorities for budgeting, uh, where we can actually even go out into the, the private sector and to say to them, and some of those larger nonprofit organizations whose main responsibility and goals are to increase the amount of park space that we have and to look at ways in which, uh, Ms. Hahn mentioned the Quimby funds, that they can be used in a broader area and maximize them and leverage them, uh, which we think is so critically important. Uh, because we know you can also easily spread out a lot of different money in different places, but at the end of the day, uh, do you have the kinds of things that are sustainable and are going to change that neighborhood for many years to come? Because we know that if development happens on some of those potential park lands, we will never give that park, get that land back right. again for park space. Never, ever. And so I think it is, um, behooves us and it is very important for us to take the leadership role here. So I appreciate your presentation and Mr. LeBond suggesting um, that you come here uh, to the council chambers to look at ways in which we can um, better our community and our environment. So uh, please let us know. And again, we're, we're working on some projects together, so I appreciate Absolutely. that. In the um, and particularly that, that wall and we're going to have a new bridge there and make it, a, and that river, make it a place in which people will be able to see the history um, of Los Angeles and its diversity and at the same time enjoy that park space uh, that is there. So those kinds of partnerships are things that I think we can encourage and help develop. So Thank you. Thank you I, I believe my mic was off earlier, but as I said, um, we are eager to work with the Bureau of Engineers to get the electronic data about the source of Quinby funds and map it on each of your council districts yes. to show where the Quinby funds can be used, where they should be used, abandon the two mile limit, and uh, base investments on need. Great. Well, thank, thank you very much. Thank, thank you very, you very much. much, Mr. Sign. You're welcome.